Christ, amen. The question before us today is, what kind of king do you want? What kind of king do you want? We tend to choose leaders who we think will help us with our security, with our safety, to help us overcome our perceived fears. And it seems today that there's a number of people in our society who are willing to throw over democracy to have a king-like leader, to have a dictator, as long as the dicta dictator goes according to their wants and not somebody else's wants. So we want a strong leader, a strong leader who will help us be strong and help us overcome those things that we're afraid of and help us overcome the problems of our society, protect us from our perceived enemies. We want a leader who will come in on a massive jet plane, not one who will come riding in on a donkey. And we want a leader who will be able to prove their strength. And so we put them through two years of campaigning to see if they're strong enough to handle the job. And then we see that kind of thing going on in our reading today. As Jesus is hanging on the cross, and the people, remember the sign over Jesus, this is the king of the Jews. And the people saying, and these are the quotes from our reading today, he saved others, let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. Today, as we think about the reign of Christ, isn't it interesting that as we talk about the reign of Christ, our lesson talks about Jesus on the cross. So the king we're honoring, we honor as he's dying on the cross. The only crown Jesus ever wore was a crown of thorns. In the first letter to the Corinthians, Paul writes this. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. And Jesus is still a stumbling block to many people in our world today. How can we worship a king who gets himself crucified? Was Jesus' crucifixion a sign of failure? There's a lot of people today who think that. In fact, there's some religious movements that that's part of their movement. One of the best known was the Unification Church with Sun Myung Moon. Sun Myung Moon taught that Jesus failed when he was crucified, and so Sun Myung Moon came to be, to complete what Jesus didn't finish. Of course, Sun Myung Moon today is dead. So what kind of king do you want? For most people, the answer, looking at Jesus on the cross, is not this kind of king. We don't want this kind of king. There's a movement among the Christian churches in our society to, uh, the, to have the macho Jesus, the strong Jesus, the Jesus who can kick you know what. And that's a movement in our, in our world. See, they don't want a king who's on the cross. See, Jesus is not running to be elected king. He is not looking to appease the masses and gain votes. We call him Lord. What does it mean to call Jesus Lord when we say Jesus is Lord? What does that mean for us? Here's our Colossians reading again today. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, 
that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to, to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. You see, Jesus is indeed strong, but strong not in the sense of kicking the other person. It takes strength to forgive when you're crucified. It takes strength not to call down lightning on your enemies when you have the power to do so. It takes strength to stand up to the powers that be and care for the outcast, the widow, the orphan, the foreigner, those that want to be cast, that people want to cast out of society to stand up for them against the powers that be. I, got a, I saw a meme on Facebook this week posted by one of my friends, and it went like this. <clears throat> it is much easier today to say, Jesus died for my sins, than to say, Jesus was killed for standing up to evil. Because the latter demands us to identify falsehood and oppose systems of oppression, while the former ends up purging us of the need to do justice. So are we seriously willing to follow this kind of leader? Do we really want Jesus to be our king, our Lord? And what does it mean for us if we do? We've talked about the kingdom of God, what the kingdom of God looks like, and it's very different from the kingdoms of this world. Jesus said to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. God's kingdom looks very different. What kind of king do you want? Jesus presents that question to us. What kind of king do you want? And the answer given by most people in Jesus' day and most people today is not that kind of king, preferring instead to some def demonstration of power, not vulnerability. Except for those moments when we recognize that if, that if we get what we deserve, we have no hope. If we choose to live in a world where might makes right, we all eventually lose. If we would prefer a world where the rule of the day is an eye for an eye, we all end up in the kingdom of the blind. And then Jesus reminds us that far from promising us a better future, he redeems us today. He brings us into his kingdom today. Not only forgiving us for what we have done or not done, but setting us free to stand with those in need around us, advocating for their welfare, demanding their just treatment, and seeing in them the very presence of God who always takes the side of the vulnerable. Jesus said to the thief on the cross, today, today you will be with me in paradise. Today you are part of the kingdom of God. Today God has redeemed you and freed you. Today God shows his love for you. So today you are part of the kingdom of God. What's that mean? We pray we pray in the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come. What are we praying for? And do we really mean it? Do we really want God's kingdom to come? Here's what our catechism says. The kingdom of God certainly comes by itself without our prayer. But we pray in this petition that it may come to us also. How does God's kingdom come? God's kingdom comes when our Heavenly Father gives us his Holy Spirit so that by his grace we believe his holy word and lead godly lives here in time and there in eternity. So as we pray thy kingdom come, as we celebrate Christ the King Sunday, and we see the, our, our king 
nailed to the cross. And we hear Jesus calling to follow him. What did Jesus say? Whoever wants to follow me must take up their cross and follow me. That means not living only for self, but living for one another. Of course, we have to take care of ourselves. You know the story on the plane, if the oxygen mask comes down, put it on yourself first before you help the person around you. Because we, if, we, if we're not, if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of anybody else. But for most of us, the challenge is not that. For most of us, the challenge is how do we keep from being then focused Self, focused on self, self-centered, selfish, only caring about our own comfort and our own needs and not worrying about those around us, especially those in our society who are most vulnerable. See, that's the cross. That's the, that's the cost of following Jesus. If we are serious about Jesus being our Lord and King, then what does it mean in my life to follow Jesus? But how will it affect my decisions each day? Our purpose in life then becomes how do we help those around us? How do we care for those around us? How do we lift others up? How do we show forgiveness? How do we give hope to people who are hopeless? How do we reach out to those who are vulnerable? How do we care for one another as Jesus did for us? This is not the kind of king the world is looking for. But this is our king in the kingdom of God. Please stand. Lord God, we thank you that you come to us as our Lord and Savior. Help us in our own lives to recognize what this means, that you have called us, you have forgiven us, you've made us holy, you've made us part of your kingdom. Help us now to live as members of your kingdom, to show your love, to show your truth, to show your hope, to show your forgiveness, to show your, your love to the world as you have first loved us. We thank you for your love and thank you for your spirit to strengthen us to live for others. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen.